how much things have changed just in my lifetime. Just how big technology, how big an effect technology has on our lives. You know, when I was growing up in Philadelphia, I still remember horses. Horse-drawn carriages in Philadelphia, and, I don't, and that sort of makes me real, feel real old, but I remember horse-drawn carriages in Philadelphia. The milkman used to have a horse-drawn carriage, and he used to put milk on the front step, and we used to have the ice man come by. He used to have a man come by who sold blocks of ice, okay? He sold blocks of ice to put in your ice box as the refrigerator, and we as kids used to uh, run out and ship off pieces of ice from his uh, blocks of ice while he's hauling a block of ice into somebody's house to get something cool to suck on during the summertime. So we've come a long way since horses on the street. Also, uh, some of the other technologies that have been developed in my lifetime, lasers, transistors, integrated circuits, computers have come a long way, Robotics, we've stepped into space, we've got satellites, so we've really come a long way in the uh, 40 years, 46 years that I've been around. I had an embarrassing situation not too long ago when I had an astronaut come into my office, one of the new guys, came into my office, and in my office I have a little slide rule. I don't know if you know what a slide rule is. I have a little slide rule in a case. And on, on, the, on the front of the case, it says, in case of emergency, break glass, okay? And this guy came in and looked at the slide rule and said, I never, I, never, I, I never learned how to use one of those things. And I really felt old because I recognized that this guy had gone from high school into little calculators and missed the, missed the opportunity of sliding the slide rule back and forth. <laughs> But we've come a long way. You know, when I think about aviation, we've come a long way even in aviation because when I, I remember growing up, uh, I remember just propeller airplanes. I remember my first ride on an airplane was on, on a four-engine uh, Constellation with the three tails. And uh, I remember how noisy it was riding on that thing. And then I remember the transition into jets and the major, it's amazing today that we fly rocket-powered airplanes. I still remember flying airplanes in Vietnam. I flew F-4s in Vietnam, and in Vietnam the F-4 was the fastest flying machine in the world, and it flew twice the speed of sound, and it was amazing for me to climb aboard the shuttle in uh, 1983 and rocket up to 25 times the speed of sound in only eight and a half minutes. It really made the made the uh, shuttle made the F4 look small. So we've really come a long way in technology, and we need to recognize the fact that we are a highly technical a highly technical society, and our success really as a society depends on our research and development and our ability to continue to develop new products and services in the years to come. So in in that vein, we're going to need more scientists and engineers definitely more scientists and engineers. If you take a look in the engineering community itself, over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, the engineering uh, community has grown by 7%, and we anticipate that it's going to continue to grow at least by 2 to 3% all the way up to the year 2000. So there's going to be an increasing need for more engineers in the future. They're anticipating that by the year 2000, we're going to be short. We're going to be short by about a half a million engineers, because we're not producing engineers fast enough, not producing enough scientists and engineers fast enough. If you take a look at the pipeline, the pipeline of these students, okay, out there, we find that several things are occurring. One, there's a decline in the number of students going through the system. There's a 6% decline in the number, number of college students between 1982 and 87. And they anticipate almost a 25% decline by the year 2000. So the number of students are on the decline. Also, another thing that's disturbing to me is that the interest in engineering, science and engineering, is on the decline too. They took a survey in 1982 and they found that 19% of freshmen were interested in math and science. Well, they found today that that interest has dropped to 12%. Another thing that has occurred is there's a change in 
uh, in demography of the students. Right now, 24% of our students are minority. And by the year 2000, we anticipate that 43%, almost half the students, will be minority students. Bad thing about it is minority students uh, have the smallest percentage of people in science and engineering. If you take a look at the number of scientists and engineers that are produced today, between 2 and 3% of those are black uh, or Hispanic uh, students. So we need to increase that pool considerably. To give you an example, uh, I had an opportunity to uh, be the graduation speaker at my alma mater, Penn State, two or three years ago. And I helped hand out uh, 800 uh, degrees in engineering. And so we had 800 students come across the stage picking up the degrees, and how many of those students were black? Out of 800, there were three. Three. And one of the things that I did was I spoke with the Dean of Engineering and I said to him, hey, I mean, you haven't improved since the last 20 years, you know, because I remember when I graduated in 64, I was probably out there by myself as well. So we have a uh, significant uh, challenge ahead of us to encourage more minorities into science and engineering. We need them out there. There's a shortfall of uh, scientists and engineers. We've had more minority students coming through the pipeline. We need to encourage those students to uh, maintain an interest in, in engineering. Uh, let me give you some statistics on uh, what it looks like today for minorities in engineering, or maybe, let me say, 10 years ago. 1980, there were uh, 1,400,000 engineers out there. 1,400,000 engineers. Of those 1,400,000, 11,000 of them were blind. There were uh, 200 and about 250,000 computer scientists. Of those 250,000 computer scientists, 1,400 of them were black, less than 1%. Of the 3 million uh, professionals in the science and engineering career field area, only 41,000 of them were black, but just over 1%. But uh, so the percentage is small. Even though it's growing, the number of minorities in science and engineering are growing, the percentage is still very small, and that percentage isn't changing very much. And I think we need to make a concerted effort to encourage more black students or uh, minority students into the science and engineering field. We need more people like uh, the guys that I work with. Uh, one of the guys that I uh, worked with was Dr. Ron McNair, the astronaut that got killed. PhD out of MIT. We need more of those people. Or we need more Dr. Mae Jameson another black astronaut who's just come into the program, who's a medical doctor out of LA. Uh, we need to, as a, let me throw out some ideas for encourage. We need to encourage more, more kids, particularly in the junior high schools and high school time period, to stay with math and science. We also, I think, need to encourage more teachers to stay in math and science and to teach math and science and to encourage their students in math and science. I keep thinking, you know, people come up to me and say, hey, who were some of the significant teachers along the way in your lifetime? And uh, when I think back to my school days, they were my math and science teacher, an eighth grade uh, math teacher, Mrs. Pierce, uh, a 12th grade science teacher by the name of Mr. Hopkins. So some, so my math and science teachers were the people that helped keep me on the, on the road in math and science. We also have a lot of organizations out there that are working the problem, and you really have a fine organization in Philadelphia called Prime. And it's, a, uh, it's an organization, it's a consortium of, uh, uh, of businesses that are working with minority inner city schools kids to encourage them to stay in math and science. They have uh, colloquiums to, to have these kids meet role models. They help the students with uh, their homework on the weekends. And then there's a uh, session where during the summer some of these students, high school students, go out and spend some time at the, at the uh, various colleges. And I think that's a very good program. There's also a program in Pitt that also does the same thing. So I think we need to encourage more of these organizations that encourage more of our kids into math and science. And, now, and finally, I think we need to have more role models out there once again, being the bushes to, to uh, support or to encourage kids in, in math and science. I think if we do that, we'll increase the pool. 
I'd like to also congratulate uh, Cheney University for their uh, program in uh, technology and engineering. I noticed that you have a 3-2 program where you teamed up with uh, Temple and Pitt and Howard University to uh, establish a degree program where uh, students can get uh, engineering degrees, and I want to congratulate that, your organization for that. And uh, I'm hoping that in the years to come, as uh, we approach the 20th century, you'll see more minorities out there as scientists and engineers and program managers. I'm hoping to see Mitchell out there as a uh, Mitchell scientist, engineer, or astronaut. I'll hang in there, keep my seat warm for you, Mitchell. <laughs> All you got to do is keep coming my way. Okay? But I think, uh, I think the problem is, uh, is workable. I think we need to put a lot of effort in it, particularly in the years to come, because we're going to need more scientists and engineers, and they're going to definitely come out of the uh, minority group. We need to encourage those kids to stay in it, particularly hang in there when it gets tough, because I remember math and science were tough with me, and, and it was the persistence that uh, helped pay, pave the road for me being an astronaut today. So if we can do that, I think we'll see more, more of us out there, and uh, I'm hoping that we'll do that in the future. Once again, it's a pleasure for me to be here, Cheney. It really is an honor to be here, to be to be a part of this organization to, uh, uh, to talk about what I, I do the most or enjoy the most, and that's flying in space and talking with kids about science and math. Thank you much. Thank you, Colonel Bluford. At this time, Dr. McCummings will come to the microphone and he may want to continue our program. Dr. McCummings. Thank you very much, Dr. Patrick. Uh, there's been a little debate around here about uh, what do you get a, a guy who's an astronaut uh, for a gift? I don't know how we ended up resolving it, but on behalf of the Cheney University family and uh, directly uh, the uh, industrial technology area, uh, Colonel Buford, we'd like to present this to you uh, and your family, uh, and uh, thank you very much for being a part of this industry day. I had an opportunity, you know, Cheney has, has always tried to um, stay on the cutting edge of things that are, uh, are very important. Last year, uh, at least four years ago, we brought aboard Dr. Gene Moore, who is our planner on this campus. And we've been talking a great deal about uh, uh, a strategy room. Uh, is that what we call it, Jan? Yeah. OK. Um, and we had the opportunity not too long ago to visit Boeing. And uh, Ms. Jan Gordine uh, allowed us the opportunity to see the strategy rooms and planning rooms at Boeing. Now, there are some that are kind of secret, so they wouldn't let us in, into those. Uh, but we got a good uh, idea about how we will also develop on this campus uh, a planning room for the university so that uh, as we contemplate the future, uh, we will do it with some uh, deliberation and with some clarity about where we need to be going. And certainly, the kind of things that the Colonel spoke about are the things that we are very, very interested in how do we get our young people uh, to become those productive engineers and scientists uh, and other professionals that we will have to have uh, in the 21st century. It is my pleasure to give this certificate of appreciation to Ms. Jan Gardine for contributions to the professional activities of the Department of Technology and Engineering and to Cheney University. take a second and tell you that I considered a real privilege to be included among the friends of Cheney University. I just congratulate and commend Dr. McCummings, the faculty and administrative staff for leading his student body into the 21st century. Uh, 
uh, Ms. Veronica Taylor is not here, but there's someone here to uh, take this uh, certificate of appreciation back to her. We want to uh, award this uh, certificate to, of appreciation to Ms. Veronica H.R. Taylor, who is with the uh, uh, City of Philadelphia and who has provided so many jobs for our students. I mean, I guess we're going to take over the city after a while. But she is always there and has always given us the opportunity to have our students uh, work uh, in that department. And they obviously are doing a good job because we haven't heard a whole lot of negatives about them. Um, who's the person who's here who can take this? Ms. Ms. Ramsey? Did she, did she have to leave? Well, we'll make sure that she gets it. Thank you very much. Before I turn the program back to Dr. Patrick, uh, we have some sort of gifts, you might say, and I'll ask the students over here if they pass these things out to our, our guests today. Please, Mr. Fleming, the students around you, please. Okay. <clears throat> Before we have our closing remarks, I would like to recognize some of our visitors and some of our guests. Many people had to leave because of the lateness of the hour, but we do have people who are still here. Some of the people are representing various organizations, various school districts, and if you're a guest of Cheney University and you're here for the first time or just here as a guest, we would like for you to just stand and say who you are so that the people here will get to see you and thank you for being here. Uh, first, I'd like to ask, is there anyone here from Prime I've heard from Prime, and they were, they may have had, had to leave early. Okay, I do see the school district of Philadelphia, and I see several other school districts and businesses. So, I'll start from the left and move across the room. So I'll take the far table there. Do we have anyone who would like to stand in? Yes. Table directly in front of me, young man. The next table over. Anyone? Okay, guess at the table. Anyone? Next table over.
I'm going to take the privilege of embarrassing one young lady here who did not stand and introduce herself. She was commissioned this summer on the USS Wisconsin, a very notable thing that Navy brought into Philadelphia, one of its few battleships. This battleship docked at Philadelphia, Commander Plesch, Commander Captain Coleman and Commander and Captain Plesch was very interested in having her commissioned on their ship. She's been honored in Washington. The Chancellor has named her as the Sheehy System or the State System of Higher Education's military advisor to the, council, uh, the Chancellor. At this time, I would like for Ensign Faust, representing Westchester University. Are there any other guests? Okay, at this time, I'd like for Dr. Clark to come forward to have our closing remarks. Dr. Clark. One way to make sure the Vice President for Academic Affairs doesn't talk long is to put him at the, at the end of the program and talk about how late it is. <laughs> uh, Command, Colonel, uh, it is indeed our pleasure to have you here again, and we look forward to bringing you back after you make your Sunday stroll in 1990. Now, I have to say that the uh, committee, the advisory committee, and the faculty members who planned this affair have surpassed themselves again. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> now, before I conclude, I must say that the uh, educators who are here and the students are asked to go downstairs. You'll be escorted downstairs into the Blue Room for a very special presentation. Now, as George had mentioned, in the back, we have some gifts for you, and it is our custom to give our friends and our visitors gifts. Now, uh, Colonel, you have something for the family, but what I'd like to do, uh, George already gave you a t-shirt, but what I would like to do is to give this to you for your wife. This is a Cheney cap. It has on the top of it, and many of the people here uh, uh, have the same kind of cap. It says the talented 10th, and this is for your wife. Not only that, we want her to know, we want her to know that Cheney loves her, okay? Thank you. Now, you can call me a stargazer if you wish, but I've got to have your autograph, and I'm going to ask you publicly for it. Thank you. Just before I conclude our program, I would like to have Dr. George Kukor come forward. Each year, our department puts on Industry Day. Each year, I know that there's one person who will do everything humanly possible to make it a success. Without George Kukor, this would not have happened. Almost single-handedly, he worked tirelessly, hours late into the night, developing, preparing, and pre getting this program to what it is. For that, I'm deeply thankful. With people like this in my department, we're going to succeed. We're going to be number one in Pennsylvania because of young people like George. George, thank you. <laughs> George wanted me to remind you that we're twins. <laughs> but this concludes our program, and thank you for coming. If we can have the folks who are the educators that will go down that stairs and the first door to the right, it will only be for about 10 minutes. Uh, Mr. Fleming, we'll take the rest of you folks back to the auditorium. Thank you so much for coming.